so you are now trying to connect an infrastructure as a service with a software as a service which is azure devops azure devops is a software as a service and this vm can be running anywhere it can be on a different azure portal it can be a on premise machine it can be an aws machine that machine has to have access to your pipelines it has to have access to your code and etc for which microsoft is asking that you know what <clears throat> if you want the access if you want all these things out here give me something called as what pat personal access token let's go there into azure devops and in azure devops this is my login credential just beside that there is something called user settings inside that there is something called what personal access token click on this one and i'll say new token here i'll say this is 8 am token or something like this i'll just scroll down and here you have a access defined meaning do you want this particular code to read write the code or do you want this particular token to read and write the code do you want a build access do you want a release access i'll say you know what let's put this to full access and you can define what is the time for which you need the access whether it's a week or whether it's a month whether it's three months the maximum you can do is one year one year of a token out here i'll say 30 days and i'll say create this out <coughs> very importantly when you create the token out please save it somewhere because as and when you refresh your screen the token will not be seen anymore so if i refresh this out and if i click on this token i won't be able to see this anymore i can edit the time but i won't be able to see the token anymore out here so that's the reason i'm saving this token inside my file i'll copy this out go to my vm configuration it's saying uh, do you want to let's say do the authentication type as pat if yes then enter i'll say yes enter let's put my mouse back here okay. now it's asking okay fine enter the personal access token name or enter the personal access token out here i will just simply go here just do a paste okay which is not working let's see i'll copy this again i pasted the token i'll say enter now using this token it's connecting to your server and it is authenticating your let's say your uh, with your azure devops saying okay fine uh, great i am authenticated now enter the pool in which i need to register this particular self hosted agent we already have a pool don't we so if i go back into my azure devops go into devops learning 8 in the project settings i have an agent pool which goes by the name called what devops learning atm i'll copy this out this is my pool i'll say enter now it is telling what is your agent name do you want to give an agent a name i'll say yes it's called agent 01 this is the name that i'm giving i'll say enter now it's telling i'm scanning for the tool capabilities i'm doing all that stuff and now i'm trying to connect to your server testing the connection of that particular agent it's telling uh, in order for this agent to work i need to create folders like s source folders a artifact folder and all these folders will be created in something called as underscore work are you okay with this i'll say yes i'm okay with this say enter now it's telling uh, do you want to enter the agent as a service uh, i'll say yes i want to run the agent as a service i'll say yes i'll say enter <clears throat> okay let's see uh, enter enable okay, enter enable ssd okay fine uh, enter enable ssd unrestricted for the agent i'll say yes unrestricted this is important it's saying user account i'll say enter 
it's now telling granting permissions and etc and finally it's telling enter whether to prevent the service immediately after configuration started i'll say enter and now it's telling okay fine the agent has been successfully started let's go back uh, come into the agents now i have something called what agent 01 that just came online this agent is now running out of this particular virtual machine and very importantly one thing that you have to understand guys is that i have configured this agent as a service in the background which means if i come to the vm say task manager go into more details there is something called services inside the services if i just come down and say open services and if i just look at this one let's see there is something called azure pipelines agent that is running for a pipeline or that is running for a devops server called devops classes 1992 and a pool called devops atm learning pool with an agent name let's me expand this out a little bit called agent 01 which means this one agent 01 out here now this is now configured as a service even though if your virtual machine gets restarted your service will come up back again you do not have to let's say do anything out there so let me do one thing let me close all these things out let me do one thing let me come here let me check this out so now i have the agent registered all good running let me go into the pipelines let me say edit the pipeline and in here what i'll do instead of using azure pipelines i'll use my devops atm learning pool that's it this is what i'm now giving i'll say save and queue that's it changed to self-hosted agent service save and run now i am running my pipeline on top of a vm that i have configured as a self-hosted machine out here and now if you check this out it's telling agent name is what agent 01 vm name is what demo vm and all these things and now it's going ahead initializing the job and in the first run it will take some time the very first run to configure the agent to install a lot of tools and etc it will take some time and now it's doing the checkout it's doing all these things out let's check this out let's give it a minute for this pipeline to run and let's check what will happen out here so it's doing the same thing restore build publish and publish artifact out here but right now you're not using a service that let's say microsoft is giving you you're using a service that you have created by your own self <clears throat> and let's come back let's wait for this to finish once it's finished i have the artifacts all these things and also if i go back into my agent into that particular folder called agent one there's something called underscore work <clears throat> inside this there's something called one first run inside this there is a b s if i go to s i have all my code all this is the high level language code if i go to that particular folder called a i have that particular built code out here which means that this particular machine is building all the code sending it back to your pipeline in the form of a published artifact out here as such this is how you configure and use something called as a self-hosted agent machine out here yes, any questions still here anyone any questions that i can take okay uh let's see is the fqdn okay is it the fqdn of the vm when you say fqdn of the vm uh, okay, I think you are talking about the server, uh, but not not the FQDN of the VM is the FQDN of your DevOps server out here. Uh, can creation of the VMs and deletion of the VMs be automated once the pipeline is triggered and run? Again, 
my question is that why do we want to delete this particular VM? If you delete the VM, you end up going ahead and let's say deleting the entire agent out here. I don't want to delete the VM. I want to create use the VM using a pipeline. I want to configure the VM using a pipeline. Yes, I don't want to delete it after my pipeline run is done. I want to persist this particular virtual machine so that my future pipelines can run on the same thing out here as such. I want to persist. This. I want to put this in. I want to place this in. I want to persist this out here. Yes. Any more questions here? <coughs> I'm sorry. The agent? No, you don't have to. I can simply close the RDP session. You don't even have to. The, yes, the machine should be in a running state. If the machine is in a closed state or it's in a deallocated state or it's in a stop state out here, even the service won't be running. So the machine here should be in a running state. That's the only condition that you need. Yes, any more questions here? Hi Kiran, is it single time activity? Uh, I'm sorry, can you come again please? Is it single time activity? It's a single time activity, yes. Can it be deallocated at least after the build again? If it is deallocated, every time you want to run a new build, you have to first go ahead, wake that agent up, and then run the build out there. Yes, if you want to do something like that, yes, please do, not a problem. But if you are deallocating something, please make sure to run it back again before you run your pipeline. If it's a continuous integration and a continuous deployment process, deallocating the agent is not an ideal scenario because you'll have to deallocate it every time you are have to run, you are running the pipeline. You'll have to come here, open this, start this out to start an agent and start the service. It'll at least take five minutes. So you'll have to wait for five minutes and then you'll have to run the pipeline once again. Yes, any more questions here? Correct. Uh, no, you don't have to. The pipeline will automatically allocate the agent that is free, which is available, which is not running. Yes, so the question here is that there'll be multiple agents. So do we have to select manually? No, you don't have to. You can uh, let Azure go ahead and select the pipeline out there. But if you are specific about running your pipeline on a specific agent, let's say you have a pipeline called X, that agent or that pipeline should only be running on something called agent one because agent one is a heavy machine and all these things. So click on this one. There's something called capability. Inside the capability, there's something called agent name is equal to agent zero one. What you can do if you have such a kind of, let's say a scenario where you want to run this pipeline. Let's say I only have one pipeline. You want to mandatorily run this pipe. Uh, you want to mandatorily run this pipeline, make this pipeline run on only one specific agent. Edit this out. Come down to pipeline. Into something called agent job. There is something called demands. There is something called pipeline demand. Let's say add a demand. And in my case, the demand here is agent dot name is equal to agent zero one. I'll say equal to agent zero one out here. So I can now set a demand telling that this pipeline has to run only on this particular region. Why do you why do you want to set a demand? Probably this pipeline needs a high power machine. All the machines that you created are let's say two core. One machine is 16 core. You always and always want to run this one done this particular build on that particular machine out here which means that you can add a demand here, set a demand and this pipeline will only run on that particular machine. But if you don't, Azure DevOps will go into the pool, see which agent is available, allocate that particular agent to you. All right. Yes, any more questions here? Anyone, any questions still here that I can take? No, for Java, you don't have a concept called CS project at all. For Java, you have something called .pom, pom file or something like that. For Python, you have a .py file. 
for something called node.js you have a different kind of a file out here so it's not the same it's different for each and every let's say project out there as such okay one more question that i have is that i want to add one more agent if i want to add one more agent should i create one more machine is it one agent on one machine something like that the question here is that i want to do agent 02 should i go into my vm and create one more vm and then run one more machine out here one double agents can be created on single vm yes it can be created agent is nothing but a service you can have multiple services that are running on the same machine out here shouldn't be an issue so you can have multiple services out here which means that very simple just go here into your download section you have this one extract it out say browse and once you extract it put a new folder called agent ent agent hyphen zero two extract this out in this particular let's say folder and then do the same procedure of let's say going ahead doing the cm config putting the path token and then let's say running the agent out here and giving the agent as something called as agent 02. So you will have two agents running on the same machine after the configuration is done. Is there a limit? No, there is no limit. It just depends upon the capacity of your machine. So you can just have one machine create multiple agents on that particular machine. So in a real time environment, what we do is that if it's a project is very big, we create somewhere around uh, 10 machines. I'm okay to create 10 virtual machines. On each and every virtual machine, we configure 10 agents. You shall give me what? 100 different agents out here running parallelly. And I can also go ahead purchase parallel jobs. And I can run 100 different pipelines parallelly out here using 10 just 10 machines out there as such. Let's see questions. Okay. Uh, can you recap once in short way? So yes, that's the reason I was writing this out. Is that I firstly went ahead created a vm and created a vm is something that i don't have to recap right you can just go ahead create a vm out here uh, logged into vm install the required software like dotnet sdk and etc then configure the agent and in the configuration of the agent i e i configured i use something called as a pat token personal access token out here and then i registered my agent with Azure DevOps. Once I registered this out, I started running my pipelines out of that particular agent pool as such out there. So this is what was done on end to end basis to configure the agent out here. Again, this say self hosted agent Azure DevOps. It says Microsoft hosted agent, it says self hosted agent. Just scroll down, say Windows agents, it will tell you what do you need prerequisites PowerShell 3 or higher Windows 2012 or higher Windows 7 or something just scroll down hardware specifications and etc then it's telling authenticate using personal access token how do you generate a personal access token configure the user permission that is fine let's scroll down download the agent and configure the same it's telling how do you configure the same server URL authentication choose mode service versus interactive and how do you run the agent as such out there as such so here it's going ahead giving all these things out here in the form of a documentation that's where your documentation kind of comes into play please read this out just go ahead i mean if you want to let's say need a documentation for it i just prepared the same thing from this particular document please read this document you can configure and create your agents and then you can go ahead and run the agents out there as such all right, any more questions? Yeah, Kiran, can you hear me? I'm sorry, I lost your voice. Can you come again, please? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, so uh, if I install two agents on a virtual machine, uh, mm -hmm. does it mean that I can run two parallel jobs? Sorry, can you come again? Uh, if you install two agents uh, on a virtual machine, does it mean that you can do parallel job? Is that the question that you yes. asked? Two par yeah, two parallel jobs. Yes. You can, provided you have two agents A, B, 
you purchase parallel jobs from Microsoft. You also need to purchase a parallel job for self-hosted agents as such. This is something that you have to purchase. If you are purchasing two parallel jobs out here, then yes, the conditions are satisfied. So that's the reason I started off telling that you need a parallel job and then you need to configure multiple agents to accommodate that particular parallel job out there. Uh, and if my CPU is, uh, let's say eight cores, so does it mean can I run maximum of eight parallel jobs? Uh, not really. Again, <clears throat> you can have multiple machines out there. It doesn't really mean that eight core meaning eight parallel jobs, meaning it is ideal. Eight core, one core, let's say, or one CPU or can, let's say, accommodate one parallel job. Eight can accommodate eight. But if you have 16, then one thread or one CPU will accommodate two parallel jobs out there, which means that it will okay. be a little, it'll little slow out there. So it is ideal to have, let's say, one parallel job per one core. That's the calculation that you need to do. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, any more questions here? Right, so one question that I had for you all guys is that uh, do we have a, do we need a class tomorrow? Tomorrow is a festival, so I'm not too sure about you know who's occupied, who's not occupied and etc. So I wanted to check with you all before going ahead and telling the institution out there. <clears throat> yes, no? You need. So do one thing, uh, you have the WhatsApp group, right? I'll ask the institute coordinator to go ahead and let's say ask a question whether you need a class tomorrow or not. Please respond to that. Depending upon that, we'll go ahead and schedule a class or not schedule a class. Okay. okay. I'm sorry, can you come again, please? Fast forward, I'll talk about that. I have a branch policy session where I'll talk about that, telling what is fast forward, what is merge, rebase, what is squash and all these things. Okay because I need to cover some more branch policies. While I'll take some more branch policies, just remind me, I'll cover that out. <clears throat> All right, so that's it for mine today, then thank you. Have a good day ahead. Let me know if we need a class tomorrow. I'll schedule accordingly, okay? Thank you.